Hi guys, welcome to Golang tutorial part one. My name is Tensor and today we're going to be talking about Go. So what is Go? Go is an open source programming language that was created by Google. It is a lower level programming language that was created with concurrency in mind. So it's sort of like C++ with really, really strong concurrency built into it. It's statically typed and it's compiled and it also has garbage collection. So let's take a look at how to install Go. So to install Go, you go to golang.org here. You click download Go. You choose your operating system or if you want to, you can build it from source and you just install it. There are installation instructions right here. Click this. It will talk about adding Go to the path. It will also talk about building a Go path, which is where you store all of your projects, all of your source files, and all of your binaries, as well as the libraries. When you are programming in Go, you have multiple different solutions that you can choose from. The first one, of course, is Sublime Text. This is basically a extremely strong text editor for any programming language. I like Sublime Text. It's very lightweight and it's very good for Go. It's got some great packages for Go. The next one is VS Code. I think that this is a very underrated text editor. It's very good for some languages but other languages do not have quite the support that they should. For example, Elm doesn't really have great support. But if you're working on Go, you have some really cool third-party packages that you can access using VS Code. And it's sort of like uh, using Visual Studio, uh, the big IDE, except as a text editor. So there are some really cool ideas built into this text editor. The next one is Atom. Now Atom has some really good Go support as well. The one thing I have against Atom is that it's a little slow on Windows. But if you're using Mac or Linux, it's you should have no problems. The next one, of course, is Emacs. Emacs is basically the father of all text editors. Uh, it's been around for at least 20 years. And it's extremely difficult to learn at first, but if you can learn it, it is extremely rewarding. And you will basically not want to use anything else. The same goes for Vim. Now, all the other ones that I've just mentioned, including the one that I'm about to mention, have Vim modes in them. So, if even if you don't want to use Vim, the actual text editor, you can use the Vim key modes in the other uh, text editors and IDEs. It's also worth learning, even though it's a little difficult at first. IntelliJ is a full Java IDE but it has a lot of really cool libraries for other languages. It has Erlang, and of course it has Go. I like IntelliJ's Go library, and that's why we're going to use it. So, let's take a look. First we're going to build a simple Hello World app here. First thing you do when writing a Go language file is name the package. So the package is like the namespace in Go. In this case, our package is named main. And then you make your imports. We're going to import the FMT library, which is the core I.O. library in Go. It allows us to print and it allows us to take an input. Then we're going to make a main function. So to create a function, you just call func main. And this takes in nothing and it outputs nothing. And then we're just going to call the FMT package and we're going to call println and we're going to say hello comma world. We're just going to save it and we're going to run this and as you can see it outputs hello world to the console. Now you can use a terminal to run go files as well. The way you do that is you just type go run and then the name of the package so main.go and this will build the package dynamically and then run it. You can also build the file by saying go build and then the name of the file. So this will build the file into an executable. So now let's expand upon this hello world file and let's add user input. So we can make a variable called input and it will be of string type. Then we will make a print statement and this print statement will ask you to enter your name. Let's make it just print 
so it doesn't go to a new line. Then we will call fmt scan align. We will pass a reference to our input variable into it so that we can collect the input from the user until the user hits the enter key. So now we're going to modify this hello here. We're going to put in a percent %s and an exclamation point. And we're going to pass input in here. And now if we run this file, it's going to ask us for a name. Let's say tensor. It's going to say hello tensor. So it's very simple. Now we're going to build a server. This server is going to allow us to serve static files. Now I've already made the static HTML that we're going to serve. The static HTML is just a little HTML. It says hello go server inside of a div. So we need to start with our main function. Now what I like about the IntelliJ IDE is that we don't need to really call our imports because as we type them out it will actually bring them in for us. So we need to make two variables. One called port, and this will be a variable of flag string. The flag package allows us to implement companion line flags. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a string that gets passed into the command line. So this flag will pass p, and then it will pass 8000, and then it will pass port. Now we made a dir variable. And this dir variable is also a flag dot string type. We're going to pass d, then we're going to pass period because our index.html is inside of this folder that we're already in. And then we're going to pass dir. Then we're going to call flag dot parse. And what this will do is it'll parse these two flags. Now let's deal with the HTTP requests. So this takes in a pattern string, which is going to be our root pattern. And then it takes in a handler. Our handler is going to be HTTP file server. And inside of it, we're going to call HTTP again. We're going to call HTTP directory. And then we're going to call the pointer for DIR. We're going to create a log printf. Basically, this allows us to print out a log. We're going to create this string. And then we're going to pass the pointer for DIR and the pointer for port into it. So basically, this will say serving dot on HTTP port 8000. That's what it's going to output onto the console. Now we're going to call the log.fatal function. Now a fatal is equivalent to print, but it's followed by a call to OS exit. Inside of it, we're going to call HTTP.listen and serve. Basically, what this does is it listens on a TCP network address and then serves the handler to handle requests on incoming connections. So we need to define where we want it to listen. We want it to listen at the colon. And we're going to concatenate that with our pointer for port. And then we're going to pass nil as our second handler. This is basically saying we want it to listen on localhost 8000. So let's save it and let's run this. So we get a prompt. It's asking us Windows Firewall is kind of pissed off. So let's allow the access and let's take a look at what we've got. So here's our piece of HTML being served. As you can see, it's being served to the server. It just says hello, go server. We inspect it. It's basically the same as what we have written. It's just head, body, div. That's it. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to Golang. There's more to come. If you want some more in-depth tutorials, go ahead and check out our blog. We are actually currently doing a Golang written tutorial on the blog. We've talked about everything up to arrays, and we're going to move on to some of the more advanced concepts after we finish the data types. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe, comment, and like. If you dislike the video, feel free to comment, tell me why, and even dislike it if you want to. If you have any questions, as always, please comment. Anyway, guys, have a good day.